Good morning and welcome to our virtual presentation of Anglo-American Platinum's 2021 interim results. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. I am Natasha Fulian, the CEO, and I'm joined today by Craig Miller, our Finance Director, and together we will present the first half performance. We also have time for questions and answers at the end of the session. I would like to draw your attention to the cautionary statement, which we will appreciate if you could read in full in your own time. Before we start, I will take a moment on behalf of everyone at Anglo-American Platinum to pay our respects to the victims of the COVID-19 virus and the recent social unrest experienced in South Africa. We support government's efforts to halt the lawless behaviour and we are committed to playing our part to rebuild our country. I would like to express my appreciation to all our colleagues at the operations, our medical facilities and corporate office. The past 18 months has been a real test for those that have lost loved ones and took on additional family responsibilities, all whilst continuing, continuing to contribute to the success of our business and protecting lives and livelihoods. We extend our deepest condolences to those that have lost family members, friends and colleagues, and out of respect, we will observe a moment's silence. Thank you. Turning to our first half performance, our six month performance has been strong. We had no fatalities at any of our operations. We made a significant economic contribution to stakeholders and society, totaling almost 40 billion rand. We had a solid recovery in production despite managing through the effects of COVID. Through our focus on P101, we improved operational stability, leading to a recovery in metal in concentrate production and a significant increase in refined production due to the strong performance of the ACP. We continue to see a robust market for BGMs, with a record basket price up 29% in RAND terms. In addition to the significant contribution made to all our stakeholders, and in line with our balanced capital allocation framework, we are pleased to deliver industry-leading returns with a total dividend of 46.4 billion rand for the first half, equating to 100% payout. We are in full swing to deliver on our four strategic priorities, which ensure we capture maximum value. Our market development work is fundamental to ensure a sustainable market for our products. We are leveraging capabilities through our market development activities and capture value from adjacent value chains. We are embedding anti-fragility across our business with the aim to increase our ability to learn and thrive from major disruptions. This strategic priority forms the basis of the successful execution of our strategy. We have a world-class portfolio of assets in an integrated value chain. We are maximizing value by driving for benchmark performance and deploying technology and innovation to drive efficiencies and growth with targeted investments that will generate incremental value. Finally, we are building on our excellent performance to become a leader in ESG. We are, are embedding this at the center of our strategy to ensure a healthy environment, helping create thriving communities and becoming a trusted corporate leader. Our people make it happen. The creation of a purpose-led, values-driven, high-performance culture is the foundation of our strategic delivery. Turning to our ESG performance, due to our continuous efforts to achieve zero harm, we had no fatalities at any of our operations. However, we saw a disappointing deterioration in our injury rate to 2.73 per 1 million hours worked. Undeniably, COVID has had an impact with the disruptions to routines and an increase in infection rates leading to higher absenteeism as our employees isolate or recover. This is particularly prominent amongst our miners and frontline supervisors. We have seen this at our Mandelbult and our project sites. 
As we have set up our own PCR testing equipment, our testing rates have significantly increased as seen in the light blue in the right-hand side chart, allowing us to keep employees safe and healthy by keeping infected employees in isolation facilities under supervision and away from the workplace. Our strong focus on health has not stopped at COVID and we are actively managing cases of chronic illness including HIV and TB. The response to COVID requires a collective effort. With our COVID protocols firmly embedded in the workplace and with extensive physical and men mental health support available to our teams and their families, we are doing everything possible to keep our people safe. We are supporting our communities through food provisions to vulnerable households, water supply, support to schools, clinics and hospitals, and investments in centres for victims of gender-based violence. The company supports the vaccine programme led by the South African government by facilitating registration on the national system for all our employees and contractors, establishing and running accredited vaccination sites so that every employee and contractor has access to a vaccine. We are also assisting the Limpopo Health Department in partnership with De Beers by providing equipment for the community vaccination programme. In Zimbabwe, we are helping our employees to access the government-led vaccine program. In the light of the impact of COVID and the recent social unrest in parts of South Africa, we are stepping up our support by committing 400 million rand to extend our WeCare program. This will include mechanisms for financial assistance for employees who need additional support, food relief packages and other necessities for vulnerable communities and projects to stimulate economic recovery so that we can continue doing what is right for our employees, our communities and for South Africa. We have made a meaningful economic contribution to society. In the first half, this totaled almost 40 billion rand and included paying taxes and royalties of 16.6 .6 billion rand spending 2.2 billion on products and services from local and doorstep community suppliers, investing 300 million rand on social and community commitments, including COVID support, and paying 5.5 billion rand on wages and salaries, including for vulnerable employees not capable to return to work due to COVID. We've invested 5.2 billion rand on capital projects and are paying 9.4 billion rand in dividends in respects of the second half of 2020. We remain committed to making a meaningful contribution to society and being a trusted corporate citizen whilst ensuring meaningful returns to our shareholders. We have set 2030 targets to improve energy efficiency and reduce absolute greenhouse gas emissions by 30% against the 2016 baseline and to achieve zero scope one and two emissions by 2040. Our total scope one and two emissions in 2020 amounted to 3.94 million tonnes of CO2, with the majority coming through the use of coal-powered electricity, as well as the use of diesel and coal at our operations. Just under one million tonnes came from a Holoquina, where most of our diesel associated carbon emissions are generated from our truck and shovel fleet. So to reach our goal of zero emissions at Mohalaquena, we've broken down our plans into four areas. Firstly, business improvement and B101 opportunities that addresses efficiencies are underway. We are selecting a developer for phase one of the Mohalaquena solar PV facility, which will be approximately 100 megawatts. We are trialing our 300 ton hydrogen fuel cell mine truck and the technology will be rolled out across the rest of the fleet. And finally, as part of the Anglo-American group, as a result of our geographic distribution across South Africa, we are collecting collectively evaluating options to access multiple forms of renewable energy. We are very excited about the progress we've made towards our zero emissions mine solution at Mohalaquena. We've completed the design and build of the infrastructure required for the production of hydrogen 
its storage and refueling. We have done significant testing of the haulage truck's fuel cell and the integrated drivetrain with delivery to site in the fourth quarter. We've done the high-speed hydrogen refueling test and installed the relevant hydrogen storage capacity. And we are currently installing the electrolyzer with first hydrogen production due towards the end of the year. Moving on to review our production performance. In total, our PGM production in the first half increased 28% compared to the prior period. Now, as H1 2020 was materially impacted by COVID, we have rather compared ourselves to the performance to, of the first half in 2019 and took into account the end of life sections of a Mandel build. We were able to maintain our production levels. We are realizing the benefits of a diversified portfolio of assets. As you can see on the right hand side, we have a strong contribution to mining EBITDA from all our um, own mine operations and our bundle built in particular due to the high rhodium content. We saw a strong recovery in metal and conch production despite managing for COVID. Our focus on embedding anti-fragility, which includes asset reliability and implementing the operating model, has resulted in increased stability and productivity and we'll continue to progress this throughout our operations. Mughalakwena had a solid mining performance with minimal disruption from COVID. Operational efficiencies, including higher concentrate throughput, resulted in production up 14%. Total PGM production at a model build increased by 57%, despite staggering the return to work in January and higher levels of labour absenteeism due to COVID. Lower concentrator availability at the end of the period resulted in stock buildup in front of the concentrator, which should be released in H2. A turnaround program targeting stability to address safety and productivity is underway and has delivered encouraging results. This will support the life of asset planning work that is reviewing the optimal solution to take this operation to the first half of the cost curve. Mototolo production increased by 45%, despite also encountering a slow start to the year due to COVID. Unki continued setting benchmark with another strong performance, increasing by 23%. During the period, they set new operational benchmarks for mining increased square metres mined per month to 4,000 by their leading mining teams. We also had a strong refining performance, particularly from the ACP, following completion of the rebuild in 2020. The chart on the left-hand side shows the average daily tonnes converted is much higher than the previous numbers achieved. This allowed us to smelt more mat, particularly from Polokwane, where we built up higher levels due to the good performance of Mohalakwena. The furnace mat from Polokwane is lower at PGM grade due to the higher base metal content in the Mohalakwena concentrate. And with lower ICB converter capacity in 2020, we deliberately targeted our higher grade furnace mat for processing. The ICP phase B rebuild is due for completion in the second half. We are progressing the feasibility studies related to the open pit mining and concentrator capacity at Mohalakwena. This should be completed by the end of the year and we will seek necessary approvals shortly thereafter. In addition, work continues on all work streams with notable progress. We are improving our engagement with communities, rebuilding trust and resetting the relationships, which is crucial to a guaranteed social license to operate. The operational efficiencies focusing on load and haul delivered a circa 20% increase. In support of the underground opportunities, we have fast-tracked early works on our exploration decline. This twin decline will deploy, deploy both a tunnel borer and modern drill and blast mining methods. A full-scale bulk ore sorting plant has been commissioned, aligned with our accelerated deployment of technology with integration and optimization ongoing. The modernization program at Armando Bolt commenced in 2018 with plans to use modern technologies to improve safety, mine productivity and simplify operational logistics. 
This program was designed to transition a mandelbolt from purely conventional mining methods to a hybrid mining method utilizing a suite of modern equipment and continuous operations. Early safety enhancements were achieved through the use of improved LED lighting, full coverage, geotechnical design safety nets and ground support indicators. Success is now being demonstrated through the introduction of cycle mining on each half level of the mining operations. This is the reorganisation of labour to work systematically through the mining cycle within stoping horizons. When fully implemented, this will bring a significant increase in labour efficiency. The trial of alternative drilling patterns with the use of emulsion explosives has demonstrated improved in-stope material movement. Throw blasting in stopes, when used in conjunction with newly developed winch proximity detection systems, results in a much safer working environment. New remote drilling technology has been developed, providing improved penetration rates and reduced operator exposure. The new mining system design has resulted in an illuminated, decongested workplaces that will allow for work to be executed safely and sequentially within a more efficient mining cycle. These should be in place by the end of 2022 when we should start to see the benefits come through. Maximising value from our core is a strategic priority. As we detailed in our strategy update in February, we have a number of deliverables which will see our overall PGM production increasing to approximately 3.6 million PGM ounces by 2030. We are progressing the operational efficiencies, including the concentrated debottlenecking at Unki and Otmototolo, each contributing an additional 50,000 PGM ounces. We are improving loading and hauling at Mohalakwena and the benefits of the modernised modernization and cycle mining at our Mandelbult, amongst others. As we continue the feasibility study at Mohalakwena, we can increase PGM production by up to 600,000 ounces, with associated increase in base metals, again highlighting the benefits of this world-class operation and polymetallic ore body. Beyond this, we are assessing future projects, including the growth at Mototolo and the ongoing mechanisation development at Amandelbult, currently being trialled at Tumela 15 East. Together, this could drive further value from our portfolio. I will now hand over to Craig to take us through the financials. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Natasha, and good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to be reporting a very strong set of financial results. Revenue of 107.5 billion rand is up 155% on the prior year, underpinned by a robust PGM market, driven by a 29% increase in the rand PGM price, as well as a recovery in refined production owing to the ACP incident in 2020. We're reporting record EBITDA of 63.3 billion rand, realizing an EBITDA margin of 71%. Headline earnings increased 573% to 46.4 billion rand. And we achieved a return on capital of 207%. The company's balance sheet remained strong with net cash of 57.6 billion rand, up 39 billion from December. On the back of these strong results and in line with our disciplined capital allocation framework, the board has declared an interim dividend of 46.4 billion rand or 175 rand a share, which equates to a 100% payout of headline earnings. Turning to EBITDA, EBITDA of 63.3 billion rand, a 385% increase from the first half of 2020, is a new high for Anglo American Platinum. This increase is mainly due to the higher US dollar PGM prices, particularly rhodium which more than doubled, and platinum, which was up 34%, contributing 43.4 billion rand. The increase was partially offset by the stronger rand dollar exchange rate, inflation, and higher royalties, which reduced EBITDA by 14.1 billion rand. EBITDA also increased as a result of the 109% increase in sales volumes 
following the improvement in the availability and the stability of the ACP, leading to greater throughput, refined production, and sales. Trading volumes returned to more normal levels in 2021, with activities focused on realizing value from all our products. During the first six months to June, EBITDA generated from trading was around half a billion rand. The overall EBIT group EBITDA margin increased from 32% to 59%. Trade working capital at the end of June was 9.9 billion rand, a reduction of 700 million in the six months. On the back of the improvement in refined production, there was a release of about 2 billion rand or 200,000 work in progress PGM ounces. However, the value of inventory, being metal or stockpiles and stores, increased by 7 billion rand as a result of an increase in prices, mainly affecting purchase of concentrate stock value. As previously guided, the build up in work in progress furnace mat is expected to be released by the end of 2022. The net decrease in working capital was also attributable to the increase in the customer prepayment of 7.6 billion rand, taking the net value to 26 billion. Our cost performance is the disappointment in the half, with cash operating costs per PGM ounce produced in line with the comparative period at 12,572 rand per PGM ounce. Mining production increased by 28% compared to the first six months of 2020, reflecting the reduced impact from COVID. However, input cost inflation increased significantly above CPI to about 8% due to price increases in electricity, materials and consumables on the back of higher steel prices and oil price rises, as well as wage increases exceeding CPI. COVID production related losses of 40,000 ounces in the first half and the mitigation plans to protect, protect production, particularly at a Mundabult, resulted in a 290 rand per PGM ounce increase in unit costs. The cost increases were further exacerbated by additional labor and maintenance costs to ensure asset integrity across our operations. In order to address these increases, we're doubling our P101 improvement efforts to drive greater efficiencies and throughput from our assets reviewing our mine plans and cost base, ensuring greater asset reliability, and improved planning through the implementation of the operating model. The continued impact from COVID and the sharp rise in inflationary increases experienced in the first half of the year are expected to continue into the second. And therefore, our full year unit cost guidance is between 12,000 and 12,500 Rand per PGM ounce. Turning to our cash flow, the company ended the period in a strong cash position of 57.6 billion rand, an increase of 39 billion from the end of 2020. Cash from operations was 62 billion, up from the 1.8 billion generated in the first half of 2020. These cash flows were used to fund capital expenditure and capitalized waste stripping, collectively amounting to 5.2 billion rand. Taxes and royalties paid to the fiscus amounted to 16.6 billion, an increase of 14.4 billion rand. The net cash position is after the payment of the 2020 final dividend of 9.4 billion rand. The company has sufficient liquidity with unutilized committed debt facilities of 20.6 billion rand. Capital expenditure of 5.2 billion was higher than the prior period, reflecting the new asset reliability maintenance programs, and the recovery in operating activities following the COVID disruptions in 2020. The main components of SIB expenditure include the replacement of heavy mining equipment at Mahalakwena, the construction of tailing storage facilities at Mototolo and Mahalakwena, as well as the ACPB rebuild. Project capital of half a billion rand was incurred on the future of Mahalakwena feasibility studies, the development of the mechanized Tumela 15 East drop down, as well as progressing the feasibility study at the De Brocken replacement project at Mototolo. Breakthrough project capital was incurred 
on the equipment required for the modernization of a Mandibilt, on the copper leach project at the base metals refinery, and Unki and Motutola's debottlenecking projects, as well as completing the first phase of the bulk ore sorting plant at Mahalakwena. Year-to-date capital expenditure is below our plan, however we retain our full year SIB capital guidance. This is, of course, subject to any further potential COVID-19 disruptions. In line with our disciplined and value-focused approach to capital allocation, the Board has approved an interim dividend of 46.4 billion rand, or 175 rand a share. This comprises the base dividend of 40% of headline earnings, equating to 18.6 billion rand, or 70 rand a share, and a special dividend of 27.8 billion, equal to 105 rand per share. This takes the total payout ratio to 100% of headline earnings, equivalent to an 11% dividend yield. Community trust share schemes can expect to receive approximately 245 million rand in respect of the first half dividend, supporting much needed investment and relief in the communities. This is an excellent performance and reflects our ability to deliver industry-leading returns. Turning now to a review of the markets. The first half of 2021 was a record period for PGM prices. Our realized dollar basket price averaged 47% higher than in the first half of 2020, led by a 168% increase in the rhodium price, while palladium averaged 22% higher over the period. Platinum was up 38% year-on-year to $1,170 per ounce. For the minor PGMs, iridium hit an all-time high to average $5,300 per ounce, while ruthenium reached a 14-year high, up 80% to average $470 per ounce. In the short term, demand from the automotive sector, which makes up approximately two-thirds of gross PGM demand, has been robust. Since the COVID shock in the first half of 2020, we've seen an impressive recovery in auto sales and production, which has continued into 2021. However, the growth has slowed due to the semiconductor chip shortage, which has reduced auto output by around 4 million vehicles in the first half. Despite this, underlying demand for cars has been very strong, especially in the US and China, and inventories are now low. This points to a strong production recovery when the chip shortage eases, and while the outlook for the recovery is uncertain, this seems likely in the second half of 2021 or early 2022 at the latest. Rising auto production is positive for all PGMs, but we expect platinum to see faster growth as it substitutes a portion of the palladium in the gasoline catalyst. There might be a role for palladium to replace rhodium in the catalyst, but our research suggests this is limited. Looking in a bit more detail at each of the major PGMs. Platinum hit a six-year high in US dollar terms in the first half. This was investor-driven, indicating confidence in the future demand prospects from gasoline automotive substitution and from the hydrogen economy. Platinum has fallen back a little since then, and in 2021, it will be in surplus after two years of deficit. While industrial platinum demand is strong, growing 14% on the back of solid capital investment, platinum jewelry demand continues to underperform, with the retail sector still subdued due to COVID. Further out, we forecast platinum to return to deficit in the next few years, as these positive future prospects start to materialize. Palladium hit a record high of over $3,000 per ounce, driven by strong demand and lower supply. This comes following 10 consecutive years of annual deficits, showing tightness in the market. We expect palladium will remain in deficit in the next years due to strong automotive demand, driven by a combination of recovering global light vehicle production and ongoing high palladium loadings. We do acknowledge that the palladium deficit should start to shrink as substitution by platinum in gasoline catalysts and the growth of sales of battery electric vehicles bring this metal into balance. Rhodium's remarkable price performance during the first half 
averaging nearly $25,000 per ounce, reflected a continuing fundamental deficit. Firm automotive demand, driven by robust automotive production and high rhodium loadings, outweighed still constrained supply. The pullback in price by mid-year reflects both improving supply and worse than anticipated auto production trends, owing to the semiconductor issue. For these reasons, we expect the rhodium market to be in balance in 2021. Yet increasing auto production means that the deficit is set to grow again from 2022. Looking now to the medium term, the chart on the left hand side shows tighter emission standards that meant higher PGM loadings for light vehicles, as demonstrated by the various stages of European legislation. This has been further enhanced in recent years by more realistic real-world testing, effectively making these emissions rules tougher. Although there is always considerable pressure to thrift metals, as Euro 7 legislation is introduced later this decade, we expect to see another increase in loadings. As best-in-class technology reduces emissions in autos rolled out globally, we expect to see a similar story in large and growing markets of China and India. This should support and ensure global automotive PGM demand remains robust despite the rising share of battery electric vehicles. Thank you. I'll now hand you back to Natasha. Thank you, Greg. Now turning to our market development activities. In line with our strategy, we continue to stimulate new markets. The development of the hydrogen economy remains an important source of incremental future demand for PGMs. Many market commentators suggest that nations will not be able to fully decarbonize without green hydrogen playing a role. We have seen an acceleration of commitments worldwide, even in the last six months with the number of large-scale projects announced increasing to 359. Government pledges to develop the hydrogen economy increasing to $76 billion and 69 gigawatt of electrolyzer capacity announced with more planned. We have long understood the potential of the hydrogen economy for PGM demand and have been involved in market development for many years. We remain actively involved in advocacy of the hydrogen economy, with Anglo-American being one of the first members of the Hydrogen Council. We have leading roles in industry bodies in South Africa, the UK and China. The spin-out of IP Ventures has enabled them to increase their committed funding to nearly $400 million, which has so far been invested into 17 portfolio companies at various stages of the hydrogen economy cycle. Beyond the hydrogen economy, we are working on progressing PGM demand in a variety of NU sectors, which utilize the full basket of PGMs. You are likely familiar by now with our co-funding of the line battery technologies to develop palladium and platinum enabled solutions for lithium batteries. We have recently been awarded three patents to take this technology forward to ultimate commercialization. Our collaboration with Alloy in the UK created the world's first physical and digital alloy capability for PGMs. The potential of new alloys is allowing us to develop multiple projects in the jewelry, aerospace and industrial sectors that might, might open up untapped markets and other segments. The computing world is an opportunity area for PGMs. We are moving towards both a sustainable and more data-centric society and will need more devices or hardware with better performance and with lower energy consumption. This is where Spintronics, such as magnetic memories or MRAM, come in. In the last 12 months, we have established collaborations to research PGM materials that may enhance or enable memory capacity. In food tech, we are commercializing PGM-based technology that prolongs freshness of food, thereby minimizing food waste. In Japan and China, together, together with Furia, we have established the FT Eco company to develop and commercialize applications for home and retail appliances. We just concluded a successful e-commerce consumer market test in Japan 
and have identified our production site in China. Each of these value propositions are underpinned by PGM-enabled or PGM-enhanced products, which should stimulate future demand for our metals. I want to conclude our presentation with our 2021 guidance and a summary of the first half. We have made some revisions to our guidance for the full year. Our metal in concentrate PGM production guidance has been tightened to between 4.2 and 4.4 million PGM ounces due to lower third party concentrate receipts and the ongoing effect of COVID on operations. Our refined PGM production has been revised upwards and tightened to between 4.8 and 5 million ounces as we have proven operational stability in our processing operations and continue to be confident that we can drive performance in the second half. Our PGM sales volumes guidance, excluding trading activities, will revert to become in line with the refined production as we will have a small rebuild in refined metal inventory. Our unit cost per PGM ounces per PGM ounce will increase to between 12,000 and 12,500 Rand per PGM ounce as we see continued inflationary pressure on utilities and consumables. To end with a summary of the first half, safety remains a key priority. Having achieved no fatalities at any of our operations and we continue to focus our efforts on eliminating injuries. We will be a trusted corporate leader through our responsible economic contribution to society with a value add of almost 40 billion rand. Our focus on asset integrity and reliability was, has been proven through our operational stability with recovery in metal and conch production performance and a significant increase in refined production. And we have plans in place to further drive value from our assets. We are confident about demand and continue to see a robust market for PGMs. Through our market development efforts, we will continue to leverage and grow this demand. We are proud to deliver industry leading returns with record EBITDA, a strong balance sheet and a total dividend for the first half of 46.4 billion Rand, equating to 100% payout of earnings. We continue to deliver, to deliver on our strategic priorities to ultimately achieve our purpose of reimagining mining to improve people's lives.